This week on RSBNB Update, despite it being a patch week, there's a lot happening. A live stream detailing the new direction for Treasure Hunter and the future of live events, plus questions. We also tackle the Wars Retreat Comp Cape question and run through Jagex's new hires. This is RSBNB Update, episode 761, recorded Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. The Monkey on the Bat. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update. In many ways, I feel like this is my first episode of the year, because first time in a while that I'm actually feeling back to normal. <laughs> Glad you're feeling better there, Shane. <laughs> uh, you guys heard it last week, and you definitely heard it the week before, but uh, it, yeah, that was a long run. It really was. It really was. Um. And, you know, this week uh, we got a lot to talk about, despite the intentions that on the top, oh, maybe maybe there's not so much, but there actually is uh, parsing it all out. So thank you to everybody uh, for joining us, uh, myself and Tannis this week. We will, of course, have a full compliment next week for the launch of Wars Retreat and the unannounced uh, community event that's coming out, which is a bit weird. Uh, it's It's not Hattie and Skull, it's something else. It's something else that's being, it, it comes out with Wars Retreat, you know, suspicious timing there, maybe a Reaper connection, who, who knows, like, I don't know, I feel like it's got to be something like that though, right? Yeah, yeah, it would probably definitely be something combat related, but nonetheless, if you're joining us for the first time, I am Shane12088, he is Tannis 79 and we're going to start with the patch notes this week because, you know, this is the this is the section of the show where we get to talk about some of the things that were changed. And, you know, not too many hard hitters this week, but still definitely worth talking about. For all you combat types out there jumping straight in, an intercept can now be refreshed on a target that has already been affected by the spell, so you don't need to wait for it to run away and just casting it again will increase the timings on it and you know this is something that we've heard many times before whenever we talk about a combat update um when we went to uh, syria the first time or uh, the ambassador one of the things a combat person can do is cast intercept and keep someone alive so um nice to see that this uh has had this little quality of life change effect to it and it's going to keep our friends alive for just a little bit more a little bit more um and you might talk about some PVM stuff later, I hear, right? Maybe? Yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. all right. Uh, in clue scrolls, clues will now automatically go into the Charles Clue Carrier if your player's inventory is full. And clue scroll NPCs will now remind you that you need the original clue when handing in a puzzle. I guess if you bank the clue, maybe? I don't know what the case for that would be, but... I don't know. I'm allergic, man. <laughs> yeah, you do have a you do have the have a bit of a problem with the accessibility of clues. Let's just say, um, and hopefully that can change in the future. Graphics wise, you can now get closer to an object before it will fade out um, when in free camera mode and in cutscenes, which is something that anybody who created RS videos was deeply concerned about when they added that little fade out effect at the tail end of last year. Because you can't get up cl- close to, you know, those uh, absolute units in Anachronia, as they say. Does anyone do RS videos <laughs> anymore? That's a dying breed, ain't it? it? It really is. It really is. I mean, that community existed at its prime in, I want to say, probably 2011-ish, give or take, maybe a bit before. RS yeah. music videos, machinimas, too. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, I, I think I was a part of one of those at one point. I don't know what exactly it was for. I didn't understand the point of it, why people wanted to do that. But okay, you want to make a RuneScape music video, fine, go for it. Um, interfaces, fix the issue that was uh, graying out gather buttons in player-owned farms. Modernize the look of the banking perk interface on legendary pets. Which makes sense, considering they're just yeah. a sale on those and... Um, it it was looking pretty pretty old in that 
regard. Yeah. And here's one for everyone. The free cam option has been moved into the compass menu. Uh, previously, you had to go into um, – it was on the north-south uh, – or it was on the map interface, sorry. Yeah, that's where it was. Compass menu is north-south, obviously. Descriptive text to the following items to explain their teleport functions, the ARC journal, the Menaphos journal, and the Globetrotter arm guards. Okay. I don't... I, I mean, I guess that would just say where you're teleporting to, which you want to have clear. <laughs> Click on my lava titan and help me go to uh, a mining site. Come on, Shane. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that definitely Click. was one. That definitely was one Click. of the old the old scams <laughs> out there. So, uh, mobile, uh, they have uh, moved ex- removed extra moved extra options from the world map top level interface into some others, including open world select. That's been moved into the home teleport menu. Okay. Um, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah. I don't understand that. Hmm. I mean, maybe I need to have a look at at the mobile UI first to understand that, but putting a world select into the home teleport menu just feels a bit odd. Uh, I wonder if it... see. Okay, so... Does does OS still do house parties where you you might want to switch worlds to like your friend right there? Potentially, but what does that have to do with our version of mobile? Shane with the hard questions. I don't know. I'm trying to trying to make an excuse here, but I don't have any idea, dude. All right. I don't know. Uh, free cam has been removed, as you couldn't even use it before on mobile. And the skyboxes and filters menu has been moved into the mini map toggle menu, which is something that you probably okay. would be interested in yeah. doing. Okay. So you can't. Okay. Nope. The way I get to it's still there, so that's fine. And and you know this is a question I have with this. Um, should these changes be made also to the desktop version as well? Because we don't have a minimap toggle button on the desktop. Well, that's true. And That'd be nice moving, too. moving, yeah, mo- mean- and moving all these buttons around. You have one way of interacting on your phone, and another way of act- interacting on the desktop. I would think that there would be a way to kind of mesh those two together and come up with a solution that works for both. So you don't need to know two interfaces. And I I realize that's another hard question, seeing as neither of us have played this before. (laughs) And I mean, when it comes to user interfaces and stuff, this is something that has always been a, a concern for RuneScape. Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. I, I mean, I feel like I need to get my hands on it, but I just have a bad feeling about that. So, yeah, you know, I almost feel like it's it's not going to matter. Like, I'm not worried about these interfaces when it comes to a mobile sense because I don't think I'm going to do much in a mobile sense, like like a phone. But tablet wise. That's what I'm really curious about. I mean, I, I guess in, it, it should work the same way, but it's going to look a little different, right? Yeah. Like it should yeah. be easier to to use. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to refrain from making any more comments on this until I actually get my hands on it. But there's just something that is sitting on my back right now, and it just does not feel right about this. I think they call that a monkey. You got a monkey on your back, Shane? Yeah, potentially. <laughs> potentially. Uh, skilling. Uh, demon cluster slayer assignments now count imps as demons, as they rightly should. Yeah, right. Uh, you can now continue to pick phoenix feathers with the skill cape perked active while having a noted feather and no remaining free inventory slots. 
And this is something I think that many people okay. need to realize um, okay. is that the thieving cape notes all drops from thieving. I mean, everyone um, remembers it when it comes to Prith, but... Right, but uh, Phoenix Feathers are right. used to make anti-fire potions, which are yeah, then the supers, super anti-fires, right, the super anti-fires, and I mean, everybody always looks and says, what can I make to do the cheapest in Herb Lore? If you have 99 Thieving, that's one of yeah. them. That is one. So, and you can, I mean, I guess you gotta make Super anti fire, so you can make your uh, elder like overloads. searing overloads yeah. or elder overloads. Yeah, yeah. Elder I mean, there is a use for it, that. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And finally, in other patch notes, you can no longer equip broken cinder bane gloves from the bank. Okay, that would be interesting, and I don't know what benefit that would provide except taking up a slot. Use cinder bane gloves will now drop in PvP. And the Mushroom Patch in Tyrannon and Isiftar now takes players to the correct skill guide location when choosing guide on it. There we go. All right. And that's it for the patch notes this week. Very small. But, Just a few. But a few. there was also some news this week in regards to War's Retreat. You mean maybe some things that people weren't counting on? Yeah, and you know they said apparently in the live stream, people on Reddit were asking for achievements relating to it. Yeah, I think they asked for achievements. I don't think they were asking for um, a comp rec. Rex <laughs> requirements were a little different than the achievements. Oh, all right. Let's go uh-huh. through the two achievements first because these don't hurt. Um, aura, aura, aura. Unlock every aura in the Wars Retreat Store, which you can accomplish before it comes out if you have loyalty points before uh, reset on Sunday. You could just go buy them with loyalty points if you didn't have them previously because all these auras will be uh, available from that source after Sunday. But before, you can still get them from the loyalty shop. Um, yeah, and that will not be there after Monday. No, it will not. And I was only missing two of them, but I picked them up because, I mean, why not, right? I, I have like 1.5 million loyalty points sitting. Oh, if you have the points, you know, I I use my points a lot for the for the skilling ones. Okay. I'll be able to get these, I think. You know. All right. Uh, relight my fire. Completely upgrade the campfire in Wars Retreat. Not too bad. And finally. For the comp cape, you will need to complete My Last Resort, which includes unlocking the teleport, the second boss portal, the altar of war, and the adrenaline crystals. Yeah. That's a lot, man. I don't know, is That's it? The portal is... It? The, I mean, the teleport is 10 kills. The second portal is um hmm, they, they, it didn't say what it was but the altar of war is 200 and the adrenaline crystal is a thousand <sighs> then this is the most i i, I can, i'm having trouble making sense oh sorry the portal is 100 so you're going to need a thousand boss kills yeah um and chances are, <laughs> because you'll be able to use your existing boss kills if you've already stacked them up, you can just go in and unlock these. Well, I mean, perhaps, but there was supposed to be something going forward where we were unco- – un- I thought they were uncoppling combat from the completion escape. Now, that mu- I must be mistaken. Because right now all that happened was they removed the cape stats from that yeah. cape so that the PVM yeah. group, they don't ever have to yeah. like keep a comp cape up. But if you're interested in a comp cape, you still have to do the combat. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I feel like someone got screwed. <laughs> I'm just, you know... I really thought it was going to be kind of separate. I mean, I guess I don't know. I mean, that's an old 
that's an old debate there, isn't it, Shane? Yeah. And uh, dating back to last year. The last year and, and before yeah. that. Because, I mean, the question is, um, is asking people to have comp to do bossing too much? And I, I think I think everybody unanimously agreed on that, that the answer was yes, right? Right. So is asking completionists to have to do bossing too much. Yeah. And, you know, I guess there there is an argument that could be made that, no, it's not too much. So, so I mean, it's, it's interesting, but come on. PVM made out like bandits. Yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> I, I just want to do a bit of an experiment here on this. So, I don't PVM. And I'm going to count up some of my boss kills right now on here. Um, while we do this, we got one on the ambassador, two, three, four, already at Commander Zil- Ziliana, 17, so we're at 21, 28 with the Crassian Leviathan, Dagon off King, zero. No, I'm at 20, 28 boss kills so far. I'm at General Gradar, zero. Because uh, I killed all these before. Grigorovic, zero. Harakin, zero. Hellweir, zero. Calphite King, zero. Calphite Queen, zero. King Black Dragon, 21. So we're at 49. Uh, Kriara, zero. Krill. 49 again. So with that, uh, we're at 98. Legions, Magister, Masuta, we're at 104. Nex, we're at 1. 105. AOD, 0. 63 on the QBD. Uh, So that puts us up to 100. 67, Sanctum Guardian, 4, 171, Siryu, 1, 172, Solag, 0, Terraket, 1, 172, Tello, Zip, Twin Furies, Jad didn't do that back in the day, Varak, Lith, didn't get the kill count on that, Vindicta and Gorvik, so I said, uh, I think I said 184 we're at, and 74 on Vindicta. So, 184 plus 74 is, so I'm, I'm at about, uh, you know, uh, one, one fi- 250-ish kills, and I just do this casually. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I'm... And, and I mean, with this, the QBD counts, or sorry, the KBD counts, the mole counts for it... So it's not something that somebody who is, you know, sub 100 can't do. I just want to make that distinction with that. So I think this sub is fine. Yeah, sub combat 100. You can kill them all there. You're not going to have to. <laughs> a comp requirement is the, this as a comp requirement is not. It's it's uh, not a tough one is, is what we're saying what I'm saying with this. Well, what I'm saying is you don't have to worry about being a hundred, a <laughs> hundred level. I mean, you'd have a long way to go before this well, is no, ever even well, a concern, right? And and that's why I think this is not a problem at all. But what's to what's what's to stop the next boss from having comp requirements? as well like that are actually tougher like right and um, and and just and i think you hit the nail on the head with that yeah i just thought i thought they had finally decoupled not right reattached like that's what i mean that's what all that's what your concern is right yeah yeah and, and you know that might have been a good question to ask in the live stream this week granted they did talk about the achievements they talked about the comp requirement but they didn't say uh what the relation to this on the path going forward would be well and i think i mean achievements i am all for in fact like i hope you can make the hardest freaking unbelievable achievement 
that you could possibly imagine. I'd be fine with that. Like, don't ever get hit or so. I don't know, whatever the crazy, you know, shit is. Um, because, I don't know, I feel like the achievements are different. Achievements are definitely not a requirement. Than comp. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is another reason why having the Medicapes would have been good. So I think we can leave that there and uh, reevaluate next week when this uh, arrives. So, I mean, maybe, but hell, with what we're seeing here, they just would have added it to the co- to the combat cape and the damn cup. Well, yeah, that would have wound up happening because of that, <laughs> right? Because right? you need one yeah. to get the other. So, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I'm just uh, cautious. Slippery slope. All right, fair enough. So we're going to talk about the live stream. And this was a live stream that actually had a lot in it, believe it or not. So starting off, they talked again about the uh, Treasure Hunter bug. 450 accounts in total were reviewed. 370 temporarily banned and 35 permanently banned. And they did actually find wind up finding extra links to gold sellers of the people that they banned, believe it or not. Yeah, I thought this was really good to know, and it definitely, I think... Made... And they removed more wealth that, than what came into the game because of the treasure hunter right. exploit because they found gold selling. Which, I feel like that's kind of arbitrary, in a way. Like, that, like does it really matter all that much? You know? Uh... But I do, I do think that it, it does lead – it leans more towards um, probably what you were saying last yeah. week to where – so it sounds like the um, the temporary bans were the people that didn't – Didn't know what they that, were that doing. They weren't abusing it. it. Right, right. So – Whereas the permanent ones were the ones who weaponized it. Yeah, I mean if you had gold sellers in there, then they were – this was probably legitimate – you so, know, so you're saying I was right from the very beginning now? You <laughs> – no, I'm saying – I'm saying I was right, but this week you're more right. Okay. All Sorry, right. it was a, it was that Alan Dershowitz thing. Did you did you see that? <laughs> I did. I like, did. Like, I did. No, I'm, I was, I'm more right I like now. that guy. I like that guy. <laughs> of course he would <laughs> Uh, I uh, my ears always perk up when he speaks, uh. <laughs> even before uh, this uh, whole sham impeachment thing. But, anyways, um, they also removed all bonus XP and items that came into game with this, which is good. Yeah. And then we got to the point of talking about something called the Ring of Shards, which uh, they brought a new guy out who's been with the company for four months called Mod Bowtie. And this is actually in game right now. It's this week's uh, Treasure Hunter promo. So we're going to experience this uh, with me right now on the show. I'm going to walk us through what this looks like, all right? So okay. this is called Ring of Shards, and this is one of their attempts to remove RNG in Treasure Hunter. So I just got my daily keys, of course. So they got some onboarding here that says select one of the five crystals to shatter it. And onboarding is basically a little tutorial. Then after that, the color corresponds to the rarity of the prizes that you can choose from. So with this, it starts off at, you know, standard white, then yellow, then orange, then red, and then purple. All right. Then you can spend oddments to re-roll the prizes that you can choose from. You can choose the prizes after you shatter a shard. Then following this, re-rolling also has the chance to upgrade the rarity of the prizes that you can choose from. Interesting. And here we go. So I got a, I got two white, one gold, and two red. And we even have a view probabilities one here. These represent the probability of each crystal containing 
each rarity. So I got two red ones. There's a five five and a half percent chance of getting red ones. So that's pretty good, I think. That's pretty good. So sure. so we're gonna choose a red one. It opened up, and I got the choices between huge fallen stars, huge lamps, a large protein pack, huge constitution star. Or I can re-roll for 550 oddments with a 5% uh, upgrade chance. So I'm able to choose one of five prizes here completely on my own with this. So there's no RNG in this. There's totally RNG in that. No, there's not. Because... Granted, yes, there is RNG in there's the... There's RNG in to get the five prizes. Right, but I can choose which one I want. Out of the five? Yeah. Why can't you just choose what you want to begin with? Like, I'm going to re-roll it. Still, still can't get away from the RNG. Still got to oh, roll it. We got another one. Now, 10% chance to upgrade large cash bag, more prismatic stuff. I'm going to re-roll again, 415 oddments. And I still have 7,000 oddments, so we're good. And we've upgraded to purple. I had a 10% chance to do that. That's pretty nice. And now I can choose between 300 silver hawk feathers, a lucky eagle eye kite shield, a lucky chaotic staff, a lucky chaotic maul, and a lucky chaotic spear. <laughs> That's <laughs> shit. <laughs> Absolute. <laughs> and I spent 800 oddments on Oh my god, see, there's no I'm RNG take, in I'm there, I say, they, no RNG. And then I have a 0% no. chance to upgrade because I'm already at purple. Yeah, go take go take I'm your gonna, chaotic gonna, uh, staff there, buddy. No, I'm going to take the Silverhawk feathers and sell them. <laughs> no, you probably won't because it'll probably be down. You probably won't even be able to sell it. All right, let's do this again. Open up the red one. Lamps, cash bag, a large cash bag. I'm going to re-roll again. This is fun. You're gambling, Shane. Yeah, I am. You're gambling. I am, with oddments. You, with oddments. That, that's just, this isn't what we asked for. No. <laughs> we asked to be able to use oddments to buy what we wanted. Yeah. But like... All right. It's a step. I'm going to spend very another 280 step. and we'll just leave it there. Okay, I didn't get the upgrade that time. And that's it. No more chance to get an upgrade. And now I'm just left with some hokey bonus XP stars. I, I don't know, man. I don't. And you can still cash it out for oddments if you wanted to, which I'm going to do because I yeah. spent that. So. No, because you did that, do you feel like that was really engaging? Did you engage with the content I there, did. Shane? I did. Were you did. really into it? I, I was. Like, would you be mad if they took that away? Well, no, because I didn't spend any yeah, money on it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I didn't spend you. any money on it. Um, yeah. I have to say I, that I like this better than the standard treasure hunter stuff i don't think it beats um the alice gone yak tracking or whatever it was where you just get a random prize and you can see what it is up there yeah because this one i think still has the gambling element to it which is going to entice people to buy more and despite me saying this I personally prefer the Alice Gone Yak Tracking one, or whatever. I forget what the exact name of it is. But I think from a monetary perspective, this one that they're doing right now would do better than the other one. Just because it's got that gambling element to it. And it's going to cause people to spend more on it. Which is what we have been asking them to get away from before a small step it was not enough yeah. like that was not the, the yak track was a good step 
Yeah, the Yacht the, Track was the good. The Meowth was the a Meowth good Skateer step. Was the Odd good. was a good step. This is like... <sighs> they're still fiddling around the edges when eventually you just got to get off the RNG. Yeah, uh, and you know, they did say with this that there's going to be the chance of doing other uh, purely cosmetic promos with Treasure Hunter as well. But they're trying to justify gambling with engagement and that's not right that's not right the engagement that they're really talking about is the engagement that people will engage because they actually do want the xp that's what it i mean that's what it's about right yeah and 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 this was a whole discussion that was taken the wrong way um in the community this week is you know they said engagement's good with treasure hunter and what that means is that people who buy keys are engaging with the content and are presumably enjoying it because, of course, they're spending money on it. Right. Enga- but that and, was, oh. and, and the misconception that the community got from this is that, oh, people are getting their daily two or three keys. They're using it. And, oh, that, that, means, that means it's good. That means there's no Treasure Hunter problem. But no, that is not how you would measure engagement on something like Treasure Hunter. No, no. I think it's spin. I think it's spin for... We really don't. We're, we're we don't know how to exist. Without I don't think there was any spin this the, week at the moment. I don't think there was any spin this week because. But if people there was, are we... engaged. How do you get? How do you get prismatic start? How do you get fallen starts? How do you, how do you get the treasure item? A treasure hunter item is other than interacting with treasure hunter. You're going to have to engage with that. That's not what people care about. But, they but, would engage just as much if they could buy specific things. It, right. And, and and see, this is where the confusion came in, is that you can have engagement of just using a piece of content, but there is something called engagement metrics that you effectively measure the deltas between the peaks, like between the lowest low and the highest high, and then that can in a sense be called an engagement metric and can therefore be distilled down into engagement where if you have something that's going to be more lucrative, you're going to see a higher engagement out of it even though people are paying to engage with it. And that's the main point that I wanted to hammer home is that engagement is different for Treasure Hunter than it is from another piece of content. Right, but I but the I the engagement is driven by like you said what you can get. So they're not stepping away from the gambling aspect, from the RNG aspect, from not with the this two one. Two things that we really need them to get away from, like I don't know. It's still positive, like everything it else that has happened. Change. This is a little tiny bit better, but this is like window dressing. This is like yeah, this is window dressing compared to. The- yeah, this problem. is like change on the outside, continuity on the inside. And I'll say the same thing I said with the Mouseketeer. If this is a Treasure Hunter promo that you like and the way you want it to go in the future, this is the time to throw your money down and purchase a key pack. Yeah, if you like to gamble, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Whereas if you want the cosmetic Mouseketeer ones, that's the time you do that. Um, but people want xp they just like that that's give them a promotion where we know that's what it's going to be and i guarantee you that is the promotion that will kick every other promotion's ass hands down every time and then you get back to the core question why don't we just sell xp which if you want to get rid of rng yeah sure do that but you you saw what happened there, how I clicked that reroll button each time. Yeah, and you wanted to keep clicking it some more, <laughs> man. It's not good. We want to get away from that. And that's you. Like, come on, dude. You're straight as an arrow. I know. I mean. I know, but I, like, I, I should be clear. I should be clear that if given the chance, I will gamble. Yeah, well, think about when you're about 
nine or ten beers deep on a Friday night, oh, and that's you not mean only that. got about ten mil to go on this last two hundred mil. Mm, this this is looking pretty good right about now. <laughs> it's looking right real good. Yeah, um, so when you pull out that credit card, there's one thing I would Keep like rolling. to say on this. Um, they of course did unveil mod bow tie on this, and one thing that concerned me about this is that it was shown as though that he brought some of these innovative ideas in in terms of uh, the Ring of Shards promo, and putting that on one person <coughs> is unfair because if the community doesn't like that, it's going to taint mod bow tie. Well. He's not going to probably get a lot in the way of blowback on the promotion itself. The blowback would have would be happening right now with the hey, <laughs> this is still gambling. This is still RNG. Like you've guaranteed us a better outcome, but that's not what we wanted. I mean, yeah, we wanted and, and, you know, to. You know, I then guarantee our own outcome to the Rocket League model, where you know people wanted to get rid of RNG there, and things became prohib- prohibitively more expensive. Yeah, well, that happens. Yeah, so I, I mean, you got to take your battles, and you win some, and you lose some, right? So, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see where uh, this comes out on at the end of the day, but nonetheless. Um, I think I'm still in for cosmetics, and from the sounds of it, you are too. So, oh, for sure. And I'm in. I, like I said, I'm also in. When I say like XP, I'm talking about bonus XP, right? Like, you know, I'm not not a lamp person, but bonus XP still that train. So, all right. Well, and it's a, yeah. All right. Let's move on to uh, live events then. Um, on this because, you know, there's a question asked in the Q&A, why is there no Hattie in school or winter weekends this year? And they said they, once again, they used that keyword. They looked at the engagements and how many people were enjoying it. And there was a huge drop from previous years. And, you know, I'm going to be completely honest with this. Hattie and school for me after the first couple of years, it really outlived its welcome because it was more of a burden than not to go to because, you know, it's the same wolf, the same set of wolves each year, and all you're getting is some bonus XP in, in one of the skills. And quite frankly, it's not worth the time. So I, I, I'm not shedding a tear about Hattie and Skull not happening. Winter weekends, yeah. on the other hand, I think we have to wait and defer judgment on this and see what the new event system is going to look like going forward. Because remember, that's one thing Mod Warden said when he came in is that he wants to – um, make community events in particular, uh, the ones surrounding holidays and whatnot, more tangible, which makes sense from his Blizzard Overwatch background. Mm-mm. So I'm going to wait and defer judgment on that. And then, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that, you know, we did get a taste. Was it, gosh, it was the skilling spectacular. Was that right? And, August, September time frame. <sighs> Something like that. Yeah. It was around that time. Um, the summer skilling was, was spectacular. Yeah, that was really fun. And you talk about engagement. Remember, I know we talked about it on the show, like we were actually doing this stuff that we probably wouldn't have been, yeah. been doing. Like yeah. it was it was actually really good for that. So you know, I wish we would have seen some winter weekends. Um, Hattie and Scully, like, I'm not sad that it's not there because they're doing something different in its place. Um, had there just been nothing, I would have been like, well, can we at least have the thing we've always had, you know, rather than not having anything? Because, um, yeah, I mean, it's not that great, but I mean, hey, 600K bonus, I'll take it. Yeah, and, and then there's yeah. the thing, you know, we have to pick and choose between iterating Treasure Hunter and removing Blind Chance or doing a major Hat Against Skull rework because it's the same team. Uh, uh, that that uh, was a mistake from, good. I think it was Bowtie that said that to say that. Yeah. 
Oh, that's not good. No. <sighs> uh, and and you know this is the same <laughs> thing where there's no if there's no PR background behind this. It's just a statement without any legs to stand on and no um, visual imagery to bring it up because. It, Like we said, this is an example this week of removing blind chance. And eh, you know how you yeah. feel about it. Yeah. And for people who really liked Hattie and Skull out there, eh. And you know, I should be clear that I don't feel that way. I'm just iterating how the community feels on that. So, and to top it all off, there's a new event arriving on Monday with Wars Retreat. Yes. And I thought I thought that was what they was going was in place of Hattie and Scully, but I mean I don't know. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I think it's just going to be entirely. It's just going to be a community event for the sake of doing it. Probably some kind of currency related to PVM, I'd say. Oh yeah, that could be. That could because be. they are also doing double, uh, no, uh, not double, extra fifty percent Reaper points from uh, the twenty seventh until February tenth. Okay. So, Hell yeah. Might be in well, relation to that. Do some Reaper. Yep. Um, regarding winter weekends, Mod Bowtie said that the numbers are looked at, and sadly, the voices that complain are often the loudest. Those voices are louder than the actual masses of players. If you really like something, you can also tell, tell Jagex by participating and engaging with the content. Boy, where have we heard that? Well, I know. Well, did someone say that before? <laughs> uh. That was us. Uh, yeah uh, 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 poor guy I don't think he's ready for prime time no and I mean he had the best of intentions with that too oh yeah that's well that's what's funny have you ever known like I'm guessing by the accent he's a Swede and they just oh is that what like accent that. that was yeah that's what it sounded like to me and, you know like they just never think like anything they just never think anything bad like that it's just like it's happy go lucky type deal and <sighs> yeah and, you know I had some of that's those not th- how twitch chat works i had some of those thoughts with this too and it's like you know this was one of those streams and one of the sections of the streams that you could have wrangled and you could have yeah. had a different approach to with yeah. this yeah. um th- there are situations in the world where when you have a solution to a problem or you're at least an attempted solution or, as we see this week, a solution that makes progress, even if it's a small baby step of progress, because I think that's what we can say that the Ring of Shards is, right? Yeah. yeah. You need to take that. You need to run with your community and you need to sell that in a way that shows nothing but pure optimism with it and happiness. Oh. That sounds a bit odd for Treasure Hunter, but that same methodology can be applied to practically anything, and it can change a chunk of the population from being negative to being positive on that. Yeah, I mean, this. I think this treasure hunter has its own issues, um, but I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and you know, with that, if I had the data, I would. I would like to. I would have liked to have produced a segment for this stream. I think that would have been fun. But uh, more on that another time. Then they went into general Q and A, and you know normally these, these gen, general Q and A questions are kind of laid back, but there is actually a good deal of information in here with this. Uh, first off, they currently have three devs on farming and herb lore. They're looking at an, uh, both another power burst and bomb. Uh, send feedback about bombs and power bursts in particular relating to this update to uh, Modiago or just anyone on the Jagex CM team. I would imagine um and you know we can see this 
Was that a... What do you call him? Yago? Yago? I-A-G-O, yeah. Is, is he the one that was on the far he, left he was He was the one that, that was sitting on the left side of Mod Porky. Then to the left of Yago was uh, Mod Shogun. Well, who was the one that was all the way to the left? It looked that like was Mod, Mod Shogun. That, like was, that, little, was, that was Mod Shogun. Little brother or something. That was Mod Shogun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, also, questions about the Max Guild. Is the size of the Max Guild increasing? And they had to ask, is it powerful enough? Much the same discussions oh, we had God, last that, week. <laughs> did that not irritate the living piss out of you, Shane? No, it probably didn't. Let me let me tell you. No, it didn't. It irritated the living piss out of me, dude. It? it didn't this because they got to the same conclusion we did that uh, rather, rather than yet to bring it up. Right. And I don't know how we got that, but it took a while to get to. First of all, they couldn't. They didn't have enough great, wonderful things to say about Wars Retreat, right? It's wonderful. It's perfect, right? And then, and then they talk about the Max Guild. Well, it still has a good utility. Not really. I mean, it's got GE, but I mean, it's it's good. But no, you definitely devalued it. No, it's it's real good. It's not good. It's not real good. You can add to it. I I was dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it. I, I could not believe it. Everything that I've seen shows that the messaging should be that content should be added to and brought up rather than being taken down. Right, but they didn't get to, around to that till the very last part. They were talking about not making it too powerful. What are you talking about, man? That you actually can make significant. But you don't you want it to, to be, be max. But you, right, but you don't want it to be something that is too much. And it could never be too much next to Wars Retreat. There is no right, such thing. And, and 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 that's exactly what we went through last week. That's that right. same discussion. Now, they did say things that I thought but, were were right well, on. Porky like had this. an interesting point. If Archaeology comes out, people will start appreciating the Max Guild a bit more because they don't have access to it. I agree. Well, you didn't go through invention, Shane. I did, so I do appreciate this. <laughs> I was thrown out, man. <laughs> I remember, though. It was hard. It was hard. They threw us out. But, um... I, I just... I, what I did like was they said that it needs... They want to keep it um, skill related. Yeah, that's good. I thought that was great. That's I mean, what like, Prif's all about. That's, you know, that's good. And in the max guild, you have to, you know, you have to be max. So skill related. You know, they did mention the invention bench and stuff like, like, um, yes, like that stuff is great. But then I thought, you know, I we we talked about, about my several idea? good ideas. Yeah, we talked about several good ideas, and I feel like. They would have been like, oh, that's too good. Oh, gee, no, that's too good. You know, I should have sent, sent my, I, I should have sent my idea in as a question and, and posted it. I didn't. I should have. Well, because meanwhile, like, they would have probably said that that was too good. While giving or too, PBM or too anything much to they do, could I think possibly imagine. Do. Yeah. Um, for anyone wondering what it is, yeah. there's a nibble on that on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash rsbnb. No. And I, I don't know. I, I, it, it, hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting discussion, I think. And Maud Osborne was on the couch, and of course he created that. Um you know what a question that could have been asked about this is that is the goal still going to be bringing content up and not devaluing content so there's dead content in game even if something better just comes out? And is that the reason with Wars Retreat that we need to bring the max yield up is to fit within that or are we just looking to compensate? 
what I'm getting at, yeah. is this a new vision and a plan going forward? Or is this just a compensation with War's Retreat? Yep. Because and if that, it's the I first think, yeah, one, that's, that's excellent. Question. And if it's just that's, a compensation, then that's bad. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, part of that is in the way you view it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, next, uh, will the bloom effect be coming into game now that Java has been sunset and they said it's something they'd like to do and it's a no because, uh, of the way the atmospheres and areas are set up in game for lighting settings and it's just very difficult to get bloom, right? Curse of the Java. Like, and uh, also now, now we got building, rid of it. Now we've got baggage. And also Damn building it. areas for, that go back to 2007. In the case Ugh. of like Ardoyan and whatnot that got updated for RSHD, then on the other hand, areas like Anachronia that were built last year. So that's the difference right there. Next one was very interesting. For those who have low kill count boss pets, would it be possible um, to have it show what kill they got the pet at? And this is something they said that could be done going forward. But there will be drawbacks for those who already have the pets and that they won't be able to track when you got that and it will just stop counting on whenever they release that update. So it's something that they yeah. want to consult with the community on. I really, really want this. And I know that they think the ship sailed on it. And, I mean, maybe it has for a lot of people, but this would be absolutely awesome. You know, there are bosses that I don't do. Um because I got the pet at a reasonably low, you know, number. Um, I didn't want to mess it up. Like, like I think I got my um, QBD in like 560 range, that That's area. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I, I mean, my KBD, I think, was within 100, right around 100. Yeah. Um, that, one I, that one I lost because I went to it. Slayer a few times on that one, so I don't have that kill count anymore. But um, yeah, that way would be so. Uh, it would be it would be cool. It'd be a nice little thing, you know, where you could remember that. Cause... Yeah, I personally think that'd be a good thing to do. But then again, I don't have pets that I got, and my kill count has moved up, so I don't know. Next yeah, well, one going oh. forward. It could be the – I mean, they're just going to give you the option going forward, right? I mean, right. So – And something tells me hurt. it wouldn't, wouldn't be an on-off decision. It would be have, have to be a decision that would be made for the entire player base. There's just something that tells me that. That it wouldn't be a toggle? Yeah. Oh. Because if you're adding an extra field for when um, – on the character when you got that boss pet, you're going to add it for everyone. So, okay. the next question was can the Anachronia base camp workers be used to keep totems alive uh, Mod Days is working on that Osborne likes it as well and it could definitely come at some point in the future flies will be made stackable it's already been put in and it just needs to be tested and will go live at some point in the future with this the stock will be lowered from 1000 to 200 because of course um, use flies to feed those frogs on uh, the Anachronia farm uh, then we had an interesting little info tidbit that some of Solak's initial testing was done with bots, and there are many different things to think about because someone asked, how is Solak tested? And Yago couldn't even go through all of the testing procedure on stream just because it was so complex and it just was not simple. There's nothing new to say on Desperate Measures. It's not in production yet. Mon Raven has done some more work on the design of it, but Mod Warden is currently in the process, the executive producer, of getting the lay of the land and figuring out what the game's roadmap should be for this year. Yeah. Hence that, why Desperate Measures is not in production yet. Right. And I thought, I thought we kind of knew that. Yeah. Or I, thought, I thought that I, they I, knew I felt that I knew last that. December. You know, that we're like, going to be waiting around a bit to see. Yeah, I kind of figured that was all knelt out. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that was disseminated properly. It felt like they told 
I, I don't know. It, it's not that they specifically said they had a plan for this, but it, I guess it was assumed. I don't know. Just because they were very confident with, you know, what, how they were talking. Yeah. 2020 yeah. would be. The grand year. Yeah. But at the same time, if a roadmap is being put together and it's going to culminate in desperate measures amongst other things, I would much rather have that than just have content trickling out whenever it's ready. I don't know about you. Um, I guess it depends, but I lean more towards that, yeah. Okay. Uh, for the purposes of Grace of the Elves, archaeology is classed as a gathering skill. And they have an internal release date for it, but it can't be shared yet. Yago has been working on the content for 18 months and still enjoys playing it to this day. Mod Shogun has even come in on the weekends to play it because internal testing servers. And there's a race internally to see who can get 99 first, and they're playing it as players would. Current highest is Mod Shogun at level 83. Huh. Dude, we're going to crush it. When they, when yeah, I, I, I think crush it. You know, I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be done in eighteen hours like convention was, but oh, it'll, no. it'll be done within the week probably. It's it'll be. I think it's going to be same timetable as divination. Okay, all right. Pre divination, pre cash. You know, like yeah, right yeah, when it yeah. dropped. Yeah, sure. Uh, here's a big one. Stone Spirit changes are waiting release testing. This means they should be released on February 3rd. And as talked about, Invention will now give four components per bar used. So this means that Elder Rune plate bodies, if you choose to disassemble those, will give 640 components. And this is also the update that will make AFK mining take a slight hit in terms of damage dealt to rocks. Well, now, wait a minute. So that how... So that's go. Is that going in before the stone spirits? No, that's going in with the is, stone spirits. Okay, so that is the way to keep the rate the same, correct? Yeah, and Use them, they're still on that plan. Yeah, and okay. and with that, if you want to AFK mine, Saren stones will once again be the best. Okay, which I think is fine because that's how it used to be, right? Yeah. So that can stay as is. Um, people asked if there was going to be a repoll because the activity pet polls and some of them were so close. Um, no, a winner is a winner. Whoever got the most votes won. And, you know, that's how it works in real life. So that's how I think it should be in RS2. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Electoral college. <laughs> oh, maybe we need an electoral college for activity <laughs> oh, pets. No, no, no. <laughs> no. The uh, the combat community gets so many votes. The skilling community gets so many votes. The questers get so many votes. And... <laughs> no. That'd be all right. At least we could build coalitions. Right. <laughs> Where are the questers going to go? They'd be the, uh, they'd be the kingmakers every time. I, I have a feeling that two certain people on this podcast have been paying close attention to when the Democratic primaries and caucuses are due to begin uh yes very <laughs> close <laughs> um Indeed. ripper uh ripper demon pet and pet broadcasts xp and kill count will come out before the activity pets do mainly because the activity pets are a third-party studio activity archaeology will raise the free-to-play cap to level 20 for all skills if it works really well it can go to 30 this is a big thing okay. Yeah, that's good. Because, I mean, what can you do to level 5, right? Absolutely nothing. Say it again, y'all. Huh. What can you do at level 5? Absolutely nothing. Say there it you again. Go. <laughs> uh, game Gem projects were asked about in particular. Silver and Golden Clue Scrolls were very popular, but there are some issues with the Clue Scroll community that are being ironed out. They're not on the release schedule yet. Construction contracts are dead. They're not going to be doing that. Oh. Scalable Solac is not actively being worked on, but the process will be started soon because it's something they want to do. And there's a question about expanding the lore of Mazcab and Tardiad. Uh, Mod Raven has an expansive Tardiad plan, which you have lots of time spending there. 
Uh, I hope so. It, it was, it's a cool place. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah, it I, is. Then again, I might have Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. I was there for a very, very long time. <laughs> and nothing is planned for ASCAP. Uh, fine with me. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't really, I don't I know why. I just never took to that. Yeah, maybe it's because I never really got into raids or something. Yeah, that I could be it. Really that could be it. it. And somebody asked a question about our Elemental Workshop, and apparently the Twitch bot censored <laughs> it. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> I loved it. I was like, yes. Whoever did the Twitch bot was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of our favorite quests here. Well, my favorite quest. I don't know about you. No, absolutely not. I am not a uh, what is it, what's the word for people like pain masochist. Yeah, I'm not one of those. All right. Well, that's it for the live stream. And you know, as we do here, we also do focus on what Jagex is doing outside of RuneScape. And there's a big press release on the twentieth. In talking about uh, new hires, and you know these are these are some pretty big names. Um, they come from places like EA, Blizzard, Activision, Wargaming, amongst others. Ten cent. Ten cent. Yep. So starting off, yeah. uh, David. Listen to Shane's voice getting higher. He knows. He knows. David Bamberger has been appointed uh, the new head of product marketing for RuneScape Three, and he most recently worked at Ten Cent America as marketing manager for PUBG Mobile. He's also worked on brands such as Final Fantasy VII, Twisted Metal, Prince of Persia, what? Hitman, and Batman. Arkham Asylum. Did you say Final Fantasy VII? Yeah. That's my all-time favorite game. Yeah. Huh. So I'll be damned. you have Mod Warden in charge of the executive producer role, who was product director of Overwatch, which we all know is known for their cosmetics and events. Then on the other hand, you have PUBG, which like Fortnite is known for its monetization platform. So you put two and two together and you can kind of see where RuneScape is going. And I imagine that this is the way that RuneScape would be going when they um, brought Mod Warden in. And I think we had a bit of a discussion off the show about this, that this is, you know, part of the reason why we're so excited by 2020 and hiring these people to me signifies that they are definitely going to continue down this path. Yeah, I, hey, what I'm happy about is if you can play PUBG on a mobile, then by all means, you should be able to play RuneScape, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, probably didn't have anything to do with it, but uh, I'm just going to tuck that in my pocket and hope. Next up is uh, Joey Ray Hall, who is the Creative Services Director. And before joining this, the guy spent 23 years at Blizzard, where he moved up from 3D artist to senior management roles. I don't know what a creative services director does. That's a good question. Um, Well, I don't know in this case. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, the, I don't know, the creative man. Uh, services manager directs and creative output for a brand from early concept stages through to production. So what that tells me is that this will be effectively a role for him that will just provide a more thoroughly grounded foundation for lore i guess okay and the way sure. that the game presents itself that's what that tells me uh, i wish it told me that because i it, it doesn't tell me anything i don't okay I, I don't. all right um then you know, a couple of old school hires um not gonna really talk about those going on old school 
podcast. They also hired uh, Stuart Stanbury as director of business development, who has worked with clients including Adobe, Dell, Ubisoft, EA, Rockstar, King, and Wargaming to provide insight, strategy, research, and marketing and player retention support. He'll be leading Jagex's outreach to external studios while seeking investment, retail, and licensing opportunities for Jagex's corporate portfolio. Okay. Then, then Anna Monson Williams as director of publishing partnership, a decade of experience in world leading brands such as Xbox, Quantic Dream, and Discovery Communications, as well as launching two successful technology startups. Anna will be leading on Jagex's outreach and relationships platform with distribution and marketing partners. So what we see here in the last two is effectively a way for Jagex to reach out and I think have RuneScape become more of a household name, kind of like how PUBG is or Overwatch. Maybe, yeah, well, I guess that would make sense. Then in, oh. the, in the case of creative services director, just have a general strategy going forward then that can be marketed out with these other hires. And then have that percolate up into the game as well. Right. And, you know, I would have had stuff to say had we had one of the folks from Wargaming as product marketing for RS3, but that's for old school, so I'm not concerned. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess it all depends on what they do, right? Yeah. Um, cause, you or know, what Tencent, the direction is from up above. Right. I mean, Tencent would make me nervous. EA would make me nervous. But at the same time, what did they do? And I, I you know, so that, that's really what it's all boils down to. Um, <sighs> Here's the cool thing, though. All these new hires new talent and for some reason we're just now hearing about that when from September we've essentially had a steady stream of hearing that this J mod was leaving and this J mod was leaving. Well yeah of course you know the community doesn't like to talk about right, anything but we positive. Didn't, but but we didn't know like we didn't hear about like yeah but they got. But you wouldn't announce this, this from they in a got press this release guy. until it's hundred percent certain that it's happening. Well, then it sounds like Warden has his team. Yeah, and and that's exactly what this is. Um, when you bring in a heavy hitter like Warden, talent from the industry will follow, and that's what this is. And, you know, this could be um, Mod Pips at the top, Phil Mansell, the CEO, pulling the strings. Or it could be Mod Warden saying, hey, I need this, this, and this to accomplish my vision. Here are the hires we're going to make. la di da da right? Well, yeah. I mean, I think the simplest answer is these people weren't hired before. They're being hired now. Two and two, I think Warden has esteem. Yeah. And when you are attracting content or content? No, talent. When you're attracting talent <laughs> like that, um, there's nothing but good that can come out of that. Yeah, that's, that's you know, a good thing. Um, yeah. It's and, always good. And with that, you know, this is, of course, pushing forward to next year being the 20th year of RuneScape. And to be able to have a game that is 20 years old, almost, drawing this kind of talent in from across the industry, what other position or what other game could be in that position? Yeah, no, I think it's a great, a great sign. Um, I hope it's not. And whoever the, talks I about this. Well, I hope we're not in that position because they're seeing it as a cash cow and everyone wants a piece 
a bite of that apple because um, we're relatively unscathed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're... yeah. And <sighs> and I mean, if if it went because the only way it can go is cosmetics at this point. Because I think with what we saw this week and what we saw at the tail end of last year um, from mod making crew live events, um, they're not going to double down on the RNG any more than they already have. And if they were going to, we would be seeing different signs of this in terms of a push to a further monetization in that you would need to pay to complete content, which they have said they will never do. Right. So. And some of these, I mean, some of those companies are just so big you couldn't possibly, you almost can't get away from them, right? I mean, where can you... I mean, Tencent has so much um, massive. It just yeah, I mean, any anything epic, you know, anything in the epic star, like any, you know, yeah, it's massive. So it's like it's almost like if you're in the, in the industry, you probably are going to work for one of these companies mm-hmm. at some point, you know. Yeah, and you know, people always put. A black mark on various companies. You know, EA had that with uh, what game was it where they p- brought out all those microtransactions? Or some Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really good now, though. It's good because we fought. You know, the fought, company always fought. wears the black mark for that, and there's no reason why individual employees should wear that black mark. No, that was just because yeah. someone joins EA or joins Jagex who worked for EA previously, or Blizzard, or Tencent should put a black mark on them that shouldn't happen so but if you were there and you were part of their really good um monetization model i'll give you credit for that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. it doesn't work the same in the reverse i will give you credit if you had something to do with that yeah all right uh i don't think i have anything else left to say about that so we can move on to our uh, discussion topic from Sirion this week. But before we do that, um, we'll just take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters for this week's episode. We'd, I'd like to thank Brock H., Cameron, Cass, Christian S., Darren L., Diana, Jason S., Joe M., John P., Kyle, Rastafa, Ripith, Seth W., The Naked Captain, Tom V., and Zez. Thank you, all of you, for your support. It truly does mean the world to us and i can report that the patreon members have chosen a monthly bit topic for february and you know it's always fun to see the way these polls go because sometimes the ones we expect to win aren't the ones that win and the one that won this month is really not surprising to me and you know is going to be a good one to do it's lessons learned from a decade plus of podcasts and in particular how to cope with negative update cycles oh that's well timely (laughs) very much so very much so (laughs) so that'll be made available in the first week of february to patreon members you can find more out about that and the other offerings at patreon.com slash rsbnb and there for as little as a dollar a month you can support the podcast and gain uh early access to the show notes and you get a mention in our show notes too and you do help support the costs uh, for hosting and production of the show for three dollars a month you can get a special vip rank on discord and you get a mention on the podcast at the start of the month as well as access to high quality stereo aac versions of the show in addition to everything else and for five dollars a month you receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week including exclusive access to the outtakes that we use to form the clip show that happens at the end of the year and of course we have our monthly bit we have our roundtable, which we did last weekend, which will be going up on uh, the Patreon feed shortly. Uh, it's just been timing the uploads for that for anyone out there wondering where that's been. And then we'll have a new monthly bit in the first week of February and hopefully something new that we're trialing and plan to trial uh, for fe- February called The Variety Show. We wanted to see what exactly we can put together that's RuneScape theme, but not in the standard wheelhouse of rsbnb update and we'll give that a go as uh, another form of bonus show uh in place of inside rsbnb update so 
If you want to learn more about this, visit us at patreon.com slash RSBNB and sign up. And, you know, we're at 78 out of $99 a month. And if we reach that $99 a month tier, that'll be movie night in the RSBNB Discord. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. You, you, you know what that means, right? That doesn't seem so crazy. But... No, it doesn't. But <sighs> you think TV yeah, shows yeah. would count for that? No. Probably not. Maybe. But Phantom Menace would. I, I think that's how we should introduce oh, Shane. Oh my god. I've got, I've got to start from the beginning. Anyways, if any, if anybody wants to sign up for this, patreon.com slash rsbnb. And thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. In case you're wondering, um, you gain access to 341 exclusive posts. This is a new metric that uh, Patreon is telling me about here, including 154 auto, audio releases, 23 links, 13 polls, 38 posts, and 113 videos. Huh. Nice. I didn't know that metric was there before. Anyways. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So... From Syrian, we've heard about the remasters of areas, mini games, and D and Ds, but no quest remasters have been mentioned thus far. What are your opinions on remastering quests? And if you had to pick one quest to remaster, which one would it be, and how would it look after you were done with it? Oh, this is a very loaded question because if you remaster. A quest too much it leaves a lore hole but at the same time if you were to just remaster it graphically then you could maybe get away with it okay Shane alright I got it alright what's All right. yours Skywalker had a few plot holes you don't have to keep talking <laughs> <laughs> that's really good that's really good <laughs> Uh, um, see, I actually would remaster them to bring them up to standard. Yeah. Um, I would leave the, I would leave the, the dialogue, the goofy, you know, Jagex humor, that, that style. Like I would, I would leave the dialogue, right. um, but I'd definitely bring it more up to date um i would probably do one of what i think is one of the most iconic quests one of the most annoying quests but uh one small favor because that would be so much fun if you could remaster it and then think about like if you what could does do one it. small favor to have uh you know aside from elemental workshop one small favor right. too is another one that the questers want well what I think would be cool about a remaster, and since this is my fantasy world, I'm going to say it, um, you'd be able to go through it with a friend. Ooh. And you would be able to, you know... Yeah, they used to do that uh, like with the Phoenix and Black Arm gangs and heroes yeah. and whatnot, and yeah. the Shield of Arath. Yeah, and it would be like, you'd be going back, like one of you would have to do one place while the other was at the other, and then come back and then switch and... You know, kind of back and forth like that. It'd be it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just how it's do you do that in a? How do you do a co op quest and not make it so that three weeks after when the hype dies down, you can't do it without joining the clan quest uh, guest uh, chat? Well, um, yeah, that's. I mean, it's an issue just because. Because of the nature of RuneScape, doesn't have like this multi multi character. You know, get to level fifty, you're on. Yeah. Start another one, kind of thing. Yeah. Because we don't have that. The quest, are, you don't go through the quest as much. You do. You most of the time it's one one and done, right? Um. So, I'm not sure that you can get around that. Um. Just because of the way RuneScape works. Yeah, and you know that's why over the last number of years they've kind of decoupled the idea of needing multiple people to complete a quest. 
Yeah. So I think if you could design be, it, it in be... such a way that you didn't need multiple people, but you could if you wanted to, it would be good. That that's what I'm saying. Like like okay, it's e- ESO you can quest together. Like Red Dead Redemption, you you can quest together. You don't have to. Yeah. You go and do the same exact quest, but you can do it with other people, and it it may or may not scale. Different games do it differently, but um, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like you don't have to, but you totally can. Yeah, I understand that. Um, and you know, just circling back, opinions on remastering quests. I think you do them as long as the lore can stay the same, and that they need a graphical update. I think those are the two times that you. Are the two things you need to have in mind if you were to do a quest remaster. So that's very important. Um, but for me, I'm going to go old school again with this one, and I'm going to say remaster Dragon Slayer, just to make sure it's a you know let's just have you kill your first dragon and make sure that the lore points all match up for the future quests that you need them from. I think Heroes is one of them, maybe Legends. Um, is another, and from that point, maybe I think it was while Gothic sleeps, but that might be getting a tad on the periphery from that if I remember the interactions that are involved on it. But I think you could definitely remaster Dragon Slayer because the idea behind it is simple enough, and you can, you know, just there's there's people out there who know what all the lore mechanics are, and you can just make it so that you're not going to break anything going forward, remaster the graphics, and just bring it into the 2020s and the reason i would say do that is because it would act as a nice springboard to bring out dragon slayer 2 dragon slayer would be it would be fun i mean i think the only drawback to that is it's being such a low level but then again it's also the cornerstone like the last free to play yeah like quest yeah. so i guess that's that's a point for its favor too mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, there's one other one they could do this with because it was, you know, effectively a bottle quest in its own. Um, recipe for disaster. Add remastered and add more onto it. Effectively making a sequel to it, but kind of just tacking onto it because it was, you know, a quest of quests, so to speak, that needed different things and that you could do parts of it if you hadn't completed the re- the higher end requirements, right? Yeah. So, and you know, I, I think people enjoyed that. Uh, it was hard. It took me a long time to okay. get through all of that quest. But yeah, it's definitely a uh, uh, an icon. It's iconic. Yeah, and it came out in two thousand six. Oh wow, that's older than I thought. Right. Yeah. And the reason I say you could do that is because, you know, the first subquest of it requires Cook's Assistant and Goblin Diplomacy. Another Evil Dave's segment requires only 25 cooking and Gertrude's cat, which was, you know, kind of tough in there. But nonetheless, I mean, it all added up together to just provide one huge story of questers and that was fun back in the day, and if you remastered that, still keeping, of course, the core plot points, but just you know, improving things around the edges, improving graphics, you could definitely add on maybe two to three chapters to it and make yeah, a least. modern recipe for disaster kind of experience. Yeah, that would so. be fun. Well, you know what else you could add on in the same way would be that Dimension of the Dam, or not Dimension of the Dam, but... The Verrock. New dimension Verrock. of disaster. Yes. There's too many dimension of things. I know, right? <laughs> I was confused. Yeah. But uh yeah, I mean that has a whole you know. Yeah, Verrock you could add on to with... New Verrock too. And but really yeah. that's not much of a remaster as it is a continuation. That's true. So Thank you, Sirion, for that question. If you guys want to send your own in, you can email them to questions at rspnb.com or you can leave us a DM on Twitter. At RSBNB. So we look forward to hearing your guys' questions. We want to do more of these. All right. You ready for tech news? Yeah, let's do it. So this week's tech news is a bit different uh, in terms that we're looking towards the future and the past in one of them. So 
Microsoft CEO spoke and was looking at what exactly happens after Windows, iOS, and Android. And, you know, this was Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, and he said he was asked, what's the biggest hardware business at Microsoft? Because, you know, you have the Surface. But his answer was Xbox. What? Yeah. It's hard to believe. Yeah. And this then led on to the question, is this, you know, where the future of Microsoft is going? And he said, no, it's in our cloud. In particular, everything from their data centers to their servers to their network uh, stack architecture that they all have with this. And this is what they're building out on this. And this is what he had to say on it. He said, quote, the way I look at this is that Windows is the billion user install base of ours. We continue to add a couple hundred million PCs every year, and we want to serve that in a super good way. Of course, that's talking about Windows 10. The thing that we also want to think about is that broader context. We don't want to be just defined by what we've achieved. We look at if there's going to be a 50 if there's going to be 50 billion endpoints, Windows with its billion is good. Android with its 2 billion is good. iOS with its billion is good, but there's 46 billion more. So let's go back and look at what that 46 billion plus 4 billion looks like and define a strategy for that and then have everything have a place under the sun. So the idea behind this is that Microsoft wants to look at things such as Internet of Things, which you know is an area that we're probably going to see a good number of uh, growth around in the next few years, so much so that some people say that there could be as many as 50 billion connected devices this year by 2025 or 2030, depending on which source you look at. So there's going to be many more devices out there. And what Microsoft wants to do is effectively be the back end for all of these devices and this goes into that cloud architecture that he mentioned. And you'll note here that they're not competing with iOS and they're not competing with Android directly. They just want to offer services that will work on all of these platforms in addition to, you know, the Xbox and the PC out there. So this is Microsoft's pivot for a world where their operating systems might not be needed anymore. This is how Microsoft plans to stay relevant and you saw a similar transition made like this to or rather by apple in terms of them transitioning to the service-based um product structures we talked about before with icloud apple music apple tv the apple arcade and so much more and microsoft being the second company to make this pivot really shows that these companies are digging in for the long haul and they really are just going to wind up offering their operating systems as we know them for free because that's the way most people get Windows, right? For free when you buy a new computer. So Microsoft in its own way is saying that, you know, despite the fact that we have our own PCs and Apple has their iOS billion, Android has their 2 billion there, they're going to want to build a platform for the rest of everything else out there that they can do. And they're going to do it through their cloud. So that's where Microsoft aims to uh, put themselves in the near future. Yeah. And this is what he was brought in to do as CEO, because you recall before this, every other Microsoft CEO from Bill Gates to uh, Steve Ballmer has been focused on product, right? Right. Whereas this, this is mean, more of a cloud architecture. Well, does this mean that like operating systems have reached their end, like their limit? Like there's nothing else you can really do other than tinker around well, the edges? Well, you're going to wind up in a situation where operating systems are going to be free, effectively. And they're just going to be updated as a service like Windows is now. You're going to get a big Windows update every half year or so, and then... You know, they're just going to roll out from then in various forms. It, effectively, it's going to be the RuneScape strategy for operating systems. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, like an update, not every week, but every every month or every two months, you're going to get an update. And okay. 
you're effectively going to be a subscriber to it by buying that hardware, buying a license when you build your computer. Or if you're using a different device, you're going to pay a subscription to access Microsoft Office. And that's where the company is going to go in the future with this. So, Oh, subscription-based. Okay. Yeah, Microsoft Office is subscription-based. Uh-huh. Uh, that's... Yeah. I don't like subscription-based software either. No. Not a fan. Nope. All right. Uh, next up, do you remember the web browser called Opera? Yeah, I think we talked about it not too far back, maybe last year. Yeah, yeah, they were doing a massive rebrand back then, and they went public. But it didn't work. Uh-oh. Their browser market share is declining. They've gone down 30% in terms of market share since their IPO when they went public wah, in 2018. Wah. Oops. <laughs> uh, gross margins have gone down by 22.6% in one year. They've also swung to a negative $12 million in operating cash flow, $12 million, compared to a positive cash flow of $32 million for the comparable 2018 period. And, okay. you know, Opera was purchased by a Chinese-based investor group. Previously, when they started out, they were, I think, owned by some Norwegian company. And they were the ones who, at the very time, you know, a decade and a half ago, when this podcast started, were beating all of the web standards out there when it was just Firefox and Internet Explorer. Then you had Chrome come online and Firefox, and it just they just got eaten away. So much so that we see here that they're losing up to 30% market share. Wow. That's crazy. But then again, I mean, who uses anything other than, well, I mean, Chrome, Firefox, or now the new Edge? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, the main reason I'm doing this tech news story is I know there's probably people out there using Opera. And I'm going to say if you are, it's probably a good time to switch. Not only that it's owned by a Chinese company... But the fact is that their market share has gone down 30% and margins have gone down by 22.6% in the last year. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't seem to pay to be a Chinese investment company, huh? No, and I mean, in in some ways it's kind of disappointing because these guys at the very beginning – you know, in 2008, we're one of the industry standard leaders, but they're gone now. Completely gone. Well, you just can't. I mean, what can you do when you got whales out there like the Googles and the Microsofts exactly. of the world? You know? Exactly. And Safari. I mean, if you are an iOS or Mac user, you can get by perfectly fine with just using Safari if you want. So. Yeah. And soon that'll be Edge on the PC with their uh, new Chrome-based one. So. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, if you're using Opera, it's probably time to find something else because it looks to be a sinking ship. What is not sinking, however, is Amazon Music. Amazon's everywhere. <laughs> they are. They are. I mean, uh, literally, Amazon Prime, Amazon... Prime TV and now Amazon Music, they yeah. announced that they passed 55 million subscribers globally. And that's only 5 million shy of Apple Music's 60 million subscribers. Well, Jeff needs a new, uh, needs a new haircut. And this does include Prime members who just listen to Apple Music as part of their Prime membership. So... Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure if this was a mistake, but we got my daughter an Echo for Christmas. <sighs> Seven years old, Shane. Seven years old. Tried to get Alexa to do her homework for her. <laughs> we caught her in there say, asking her like math problems. Oh. We're like, uh, no, <laughs> that is not what. We I mean, do I'm sure you could her. install a Wolf from Alpha <laughs> and have it, you know, do integrals and whatnot. That's actually a really interesting idea. <laughs> We're like, what are you doing? No. 
Didn't think about that. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. I thought maybe it is time to get one of those smart uh, assistants on that way, but I don't have any of them that would interact well with the iPhone. So, uh, well, I mean, how does the Amazon one interact with the iPhone? Oh, it, I mean, I don't have any problems with it. It connects to it or what, what have okay. you, you know. And All right. Kind of plays like an extra speaker almost. Anyways, going back to Amazon Music, uh, they report that subscriptions to their music service grew by more than 50% in the last year. And they, of course, aim to differentiate themselves from Spotify and Apple Music by offering Amazon Music HD, which is a higher tiered streaming uh, service that includes higher resolutions of all the tracks. And... You know, I, I, I have to say this. I think anybody out there, and this is the way I would do it if I wanted to, is that if you really enjoyed a piece of music and you wanted it to be higher quality, then you buy the CD and rip it as something like Lossless or Flack and play it that way. Maybe. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were going hipster on me here and talking about a record player. No, because, you know, okay. when it comes down to it, the... Record players and records are analog representations of the same PCM audio, pulse-coded modulation, whereas WAV files and lossless are just a digital representation of it. So in theory, if everything is done right, there should be very little difference in quality between a record and an uncompressed file. The only difference, of course, with the record is you might get a little bit of extra grub around the edges from the analog process of decoding it and playing it. But you should be able to reach similar levels of fidelity on both. It's just a question of what people prefer. So, And just for comparison's sake, on this, Spotify is 113 million subscribers. So yeah. you combine them both, you get about what Spotify has, but on their own, they're uh, about 60 and 55 million respectively, for Apple Music and Amazon Music. So there's your tech news for the week, everyone. Uh, Amazon continues to assert its presence everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do some achievements of the week. I think that's a good place to go right now. Yay. All right. Get us – or no, I'll get us started. Right. That's the way we set that up. Starting <laughs> off, uh, we have Legion 1943 with 120 strength on January 19th. You, sir, Tanis, 79, got 120 thieving on the 19th mm-hmm. as well. Uh, Yitzi got 99 woodcutting on the 19th. And Lorosaurus got 99 smithing on the 18th. All right. Great work, everybody. And then we had Alex Peaks with 99 woodcutting January 17th. Uh, we had the Black Mexican with 99 attack on January 16th. We had the Lion with 120 herb lore. Woohoo! Uh, January 16th. So nicely done. Very everyone. good, everybody. Nicely done. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you'll tell us all about 120 thieving very soon and oh, the reasoning behind it. Okay. All right. Well, I got a pick of the week that is timely, especially if you're an American and you're looking for a source of news that, let's just say it in this way, whether you go to MSNBC or CNN or Fox News, we are in an, we live in an era where no matter which is your favorite news site, there is opinion that is masquerading as news. I think we can both agree with that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, this news website is called LaCourt News, and it's uh, started, It's a startup by a guy named Ken LaCourt who ran the news division at Fox News, and I need to distinguish that from the opinion uh, and primetime division at that company because it's different. And what the whole site has been set up to do is just to provide a greater level of in-depth reporting and a sticking to the facts on these news stories because – You know, you can look and you can find the full story, but sometimes you need to go to three to four different websites to do that, right? You need to, say, go to the Associated Press or maybe go to a CNN or go to a Fox News to find a different side of it. 
But what these guys do here is they look at the top news for the day, and you can subscribe to their newsletter, which I highly recommend that you do. And they give effectively a news rundown for the day with links to various stories out there. And they do a whole background about the stories. They talk about how they got to this point, what all the various stakeholders said on both sides, which is very important. And they bring in any supplementary information from other news sources and mention things that are worth noting. And they say what's going to potentially happen next with this. And the reason that you might want to see this is because it is a break from going to news sites like CNN or Fox News who continuously always, even in their news reporting, are injecting some form of headline that is sensationalist or taken wildly out of context. And what the court news aims to do, and this is primarily a U.S.-based publication, is they want to remove that out and just you know have a place where people can go and see the news and get all the facts about one story one way or the other and not need to worry about whether or not people are – being truthful about this because they weed through that and do all the work for you. So with it being a U.S. presidential election year, I think this is something that people could find some possible use of. So if you want to have a read uh, through their website or sign up for their newsletter, just go to lacourtnews.com, L-A-C-O-R-T-E-N-E-W-S.com. And that's the pick pick of the week. Cool. So. Although I have to say, what are these facts you speak of, Shane? We're we're uh, uh, we're Americans. I, we, yeah, we don't know what they yeah. Are. Granted, we have are, facts, are, and we have alternative facts. You, and, and, I, mean, and, I don't know. And right. there is the case to be made that you are sometimes living in a post-fact world too. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, in terms of facts, they try and gather what both sides imagine they're seeing, and okay. you know you can see that too. You go to different news websites and you see two different worlds, right? And what these guys try, try and do is they just try and bridge them together. Okay. And what's really good is if you sign up for the newsletter, they have a section called In Case You Missed It with the bullet point headlines from the last day. So the one for uh, the 20th um, or rather the 21st that they sent out early today, in case you missed it, were Senate trial begins. Target Tory says she's giving away the proceeds from her GoFundMe to a good cause after being harassed by journalists. Boeing seeks Ooh. to borrow $10, million, $10 billion or more as 737 MAX crisis wears on. Iranian MP announces $3 million award for whoever kills Trump. And The Guardian, Amazon boss Jeff Bezos' cell phone was hacked by Saudi Crown Prince. So it talks about the top stories of the previous day, and it shows where they're going to be going uh, in the next day as well. So that's all in the newsletter. I enjoy. Can't it. believe somebody like someone with the name of Bone Saul <laughs> would 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 do something so treacherous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean the best part about this is that you know I I do another podcast Canadian news base called Western Context and this is exactly what we do for our news stories each week so it's nice to see that someone has taken this approach and done it for american news so that's why i'm such a huge fan of it cool all right what have you been up to on rs uh I did some thieving you got um, 120 now 120 now yeah um I was just basically picking up uh, some potions and stuff, and right wanted to, uh, yeah, and was um, uh, I, I wanted to play, but I didn't. I wanted to do low intensity, and uh, so yeah, that's what that's what I was doing. All right, anything um, else? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm. I've been doing a little bit in the in the realm of combat, um, but there's going to be more on that. Um, there's more on that to come. Keep your eye out on Informer. And uh, all I will say is um, sometimes it's about having the right tools for the job. And I've found some things that can help me um, kind of even out the – Even even, even out, out the, the accessibility odds. playing field? Yeah, a little bit. 
so I'm very excited about it, and uh, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to have the readers um, read all about it. All righty, sounds good. Informer.rsbnb.com. All right, well that wraps up this episode. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that and found the discussions interesting. We'll be back, of course, next week with another full episode and if you want to join us in the meantime uh friends chat bits bites you can subscribe to the podcast on any number of uh podcast listeners out there at update.rsbnb.com slash subscribe and we'll see you guys next week for another episode where we talk about the pvm hub and there's a very good chance that david will be joining us so send those combat questions in to us on twitter at rsbnb or update.rsbnb.com slash ask. See you next week, everyone. Take care. See ya.